Hi and welcome to this video tutorial on how to add trees into a render in Rhino. We're going to be aiming to achieve something like this image here where we've got a series of trees within our render in Rhino and we're going to render these out so you can also achieve the shadows on the ground caused by these trees as well. Now to do this I'm going to be dropping the trees into this basic view I've set up here but we're going to start by setting up the tree texture which will then be importing into this Rhino file. So first in Photoshop I've just opened up my tree. This is just a simple cutout tree using a PNG image I've got here just downloaded from online. You can do this with a JPEG or a PNG, the same process applies to both really. So what we'll start by doing is we're going to open this up in Photoshop and I'm just going to crop the bottom of the tree upwards so we lose that base so it sits flat on the bottom of the image like so. Then I'm going to make a new layer drag it behind the tree layer and we're going to fill it in a green that kind of matches the green of the tree. It doesn't have to be perfect but it's just a kind of green that, m that matches that colour like so there. Now you can always kind of go for something a bit lighter or darker but as long as it's kind of predominantly the same colour as the tree that should be fine. Once you've done that we're going to save that image file out and we're going to call it whatever the tree name is and colour and this can just be a JPEG image here. Now the next image we need to make is we need to tell Rhino how to cut this tree out for us because we're going to be using a flat 2D plane to create our tree and we're going to be using what's called an alpha map to cut out our tree from the background. Now an alpha map is just a black and white image that you can use to tell Rhino where to cut your tree out. Black means it's being cut out and white means it's remaining. So what I'll do is we're going to change this green background, we're going to make a new layer and we're going to fill this in black first. Then where the tree is we want to make that area white so if we hold the control key over our tree on layer 1 it will select the outline of that tree and then we make a new layer above, make our fill colour white like so and we fill in white in that new layer and then I'm going to hide my other two layers there and there we have our alpha map, our black and white image that will tell Rhino that wherever it's white we keep it and wherever it's black we cut out. So let's save that JPEG and we'll call this one alpha. Now we're going to use these two to create a tree texture in our Rhino model. So what we've got now is in here, I have my colour and I have my alpha map and these are the only two you need for this process. So what we'll do is we're going to start by making a plane which will be our tree and it just has to be a flat 2D surface here like so and I'm just going to move it into view so we can see it there. Let's push it back a bit behind the building like so. So that's where our tree is going to go. Now we're going to make a new material, we'll make it physically based here, we'll call this tree, tree number one, like so, and we're going to go down to the detailed settings in this material, this material is found in the materials tab up here, we'll go detailed settings, base colour first, and under the base colour we're just going to drop in that texture, that colour tree we made there in there and that will apply that tree colour image to, as the base colour of our material. What we'll do is I'll just apply that to my plane now so we can see it. So there we have our tree. Now obviously at the moment it's still the square shape of the plane so the next thing we need to do is tell Rhino how to cut this tree out and that's where the alpha map comes in. So if we go into detailed settings we're going to go to opacity now, turn that on now by default it will think you're trying to create a glass material because that's some of the settings in the opacity that help control a kind of glass like material. We don't want that so this opacity amount we need to set back to 1 because by default it sets it to 0.2. If you do that it will become solid again. Then under the alpha tab we're going to click to assign texture, select the alpha texture, drop that in and you'll see there it will then chop out our tree for us. And that is how we create our kind of simple cutout tree there. You'll see if you move it into place we get the kind of correct shadows forming on the building if we're in front of the building. Like so 
you can kind of cast shadows on the ground as well. The one thing with these is you don't want to turn them too sideways because you can see that they're only 2D. So I usually try and keep them facing the camera. Another important thing to note with these kind of cutout trees is that it's good to put the roughness value up to a 1 because otherwise they can be a bit shiny and that makes them a kind of nice matte tone so they're not too shiny there. Now the great thing with this is once you've set up this alpha map what we can then do is we could start to stylize our tree and change the look, the colors of the tree in Photoshop and then just re-import that back into our scene. So let's say we're kind of happy we want our tree to sort of be placed here for example but I want it to look a bit more stylized, I don't want it to look as realistic as this tree currently is. So what we can do is I'm going to open up Photoshop again, we still got this file open, we'll turn off our alpha file and turn back on our kind of tree file there and I'm going to just make a copy of this layer one just by holding the alt key and dragging to make a copy or you can just copy layer from here and paste it again. But in this copy we're going to go to filter and we're going to try and add a few filters to make this look a bit more stylized here. We'll start with just stylize oil paint filter. This is quite a good one if you want it to look a bit painterly in effect. Um, we can up the stylization to make that kind of more or less painterly there. I'm going to keep it at around a 1 and we'll see the kind of results there. So you can see there it's become a little bit more painterly there. We could also add in in the filter gallery, I mean there are many filters we can look at here but there's cutout filter which will simplify the number of colours within that tree down to let's say eight colours there and you can see that's kind of really sort of made the image a lot more simplistic, a bit more kind of painterly and textured, a bit more kind of pop arty there and what we can do is we can save that when we're happy with it. I'm just going to save it out as a JPEG and we'll just call it colour paint there. And because we've already set up that alpha map in this image, all we need to do is go to the base color, click on our image here, click on the three dots next to the image and that way we can relink a new image in. We're going to swap it for this color paint in there, open, and it will just switch those images out and you'll see in the preview there, I'll just move it a bit towards the camera, we now have this painterly version of the tree you can see there instead of the kind of original version we had there. So it's really easy to kind of switch this out into different stylized trees um, to kind of create a different sort of atmosphere or feel to your image. Another thing you can always do is in Photoshop if you go to filter, stylize and go find edges here it will actually turn it into a semi line drawing by drawing kind of edges around all the shapes in the image. What I'll then usually do is put it to a black and white filter so we just have black and white lines and we'll save that out as lines and you can create kind of even stylized line drawings of trees to use in your model so it's really easy to create lots of different types of tree in here which we can then just switch in and out for our base color and switch them up to kind of have a different look or feel to our image so there we go I've just switched out that image for the lines one there as well. So, and you can see because we've already created that alpha map to cut it out, that will remain the same as well. So it'll always be nicely cut out in our image for us. And you can use this for trees, you can use this for people, for other plants. So it's just a really simple way of creating kind of tree geometry within your Rhino renders. Now, another quick thing I just want to finish on on this is let's say we wanted to scatter a few of these trees to create a forest like material. Now in previous videos I've gone through some scatter tools and one of my favorite ones is this tool called Rhino Grow. You can see the toolbar up here and I'll put a link in the description for places where you can download a copy of this plugin. It's completely free. Um, and what this will allow you to do is actually scatter multiple versions of this tree around the model to almost make a forest and it's a really good method for creating forests with these 2D planes because it means that we haven't got heavy 3D geometry in the scene. The trees are just made up of 2D planes as such. So if you had a thousand of them the scene would be just as light really as probably one kind of 3D tree you'd have in there. So bear that in mind if you want to make a really kind of dense forest of all these trees within your images using 2D plane trees like this is a really good way to go. And we can use the scatter tool 
it kind of drops up here. We could set the base geometry as this big blue plane I've got at the back, and we can just scatter multiple copies of this tree along there. Select scatter geometry, I'm going to choose the tree. We're going to lower the rotation value, generate the matrices, and there you see I've got a few scattered there, and I've only got 50 here, we'll do for now. But if we add that in, and I've just transformed it, close that down, you can see there I've scattered 50 of those trees in the background of the scene. So it's very quick, the scene's still very light because they're all 2D. You can see if I put it to rendered, you can see them all cut out there. And obviously if you had a three or four different types of trees, you could create a bit of variation in there as well. So that was just a very kind of quick tutorial in how to create simple kind of cut out trees which allow you to change the look and feel of the tree very quickly and easily using Photoshop and adding them into your 3D render in Rhino. From here you might then go out to render your image in high resolution from that point and these trees would also hold up for that as well. So thank you for watching and if you want any other videos on creating stylized textures or adding vegetation into your rhinos and render, please feel free to check out the videos on the channel.